the definition of sex. Okay. It becomes sex when it's sex itself, when it's actual intercourse. intercourse. Why is it so difficult for people to talk openly with honesty about sex? I, I myself, I don't talk to my mom about, or my dad about sex. I mean, it's, it's natural, but it's the time for it. You have to make up in your own mind whether I'm gonna let him touch me or I'm not gonna let him touch me. And you have to stand to your ground in order to keep it from going that far. I think we're like, oh, they really like us. They're taking us out to eat, yeah, taking us to yes. the movies. That's something the out They're expecting to get some. Definitely. Well, let's feed you. Don't My daughter and I were friends. Most of our her growing up, we were close until she reached about 15. Hi, did you have a good day at school today? I caused my parents a lot of pain. I totally withdrew from them. I didn't want to be around my family. I would lock myself in my room. My mom, we would just cry. Both of us were so unhappy. Um, my dad, we didn't even hardly talk because we, we just didn't have anything that to talk cute. about because yeah. I was doing everything wrong. Oh, I love that. I love it. You look so skinny. It's beautiful. Yes, you do. It fits great. No, you look beautiful. Before I would date somebody, I would find out about them. I would find out who liked them, who didn't like them, um, if they did drugs, if they were cool, how experienced they were. I think experience had a lot to do whether or not I wanted to date them or not. I take responsibility for part of Allison's actions because her father and I divorced at a crucial time in her life, which I think that that had, had a major impact on her. And I go, whoa, Mom, look at Allie. Stop. Stop. That's true. I do like the dress. I am excited. I like it. It's going to take me forever to get ready. What are you doing this weekend? Because I'm going to see Miss Sharon and I won't be here, and I was trying to find out what your plans were. I guess, well, I talked to Dad last night, and I'm gonna go tomorrow, and I'm gonna have some ice cream with him at Brewster's, and I think I'm gonna tell him about my past, but it's gonna be weird, and I don't know how he's gonna feel, I don't know how he's gonna react, if I'm really not sure about what I'm gonna do, or if I'm just gonna go, and we're not gonna talk about it, because I don't want him to be disappointed well, I think he's going to love you. I'm not saying that his reaction, you know how he acts. You know, when he finds something out, it might take him a week or so to get over it. But I think bottom line is he'll get over it. He still loves you, and he's your daddy, and he needs to know. I love you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody wants to be in love. Everybody wants to just have this romantic love, get married, da 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 da, that kind of thing. I think that girls are just a lot more romantic than guys are, and they're just looking for a romance and um, just a good relationship to talk to, just somebody to talk on a deep level. Nice body. I like big, naked, nice bodies. Yes! Yeah, it's going to be real pretty. <laughs> the type of guys I like are normally, they don't put gel in their hair or take longer to get ready than I do. Or I like somebody with a really good sense of humor. Ooh, you look pretty. Don't I love that. it. Looks good. No, you don't look fat. Well, what's wrong with my hair? Are you nervous? Sort of. Why wow, you'll be the bell of the ball with all those football, football players Ooh, that won't even be able to play football. Um, I think the media has a lot to do with um, with sex and with drugs and with um, with the way people think about their self and feel about their self. Because I know that every time I look in a magazine or every time I look on these movies that they're having love stories and all that, they're thin. They have 
the big boobs and their their um their makeup is right, their hair is in style, all their clothes are in style, and of course when you open magazines everybody's thin and you want to look like that. What color makeup? I would do the blue where you do real white at the top and then you put the blue. White all around? White on that top lid like you always do and then put the blue right there underneath and uh, I don't want to do that. Well, what Something do else. Do? I don't know. I, I'll just do, I don't know which one, not the white. I'm just going to do blue. You just do it and let me look at it. Lip gloss. No, I put brown and then the gloss. Don't y'all look beautiful. Thank you. Sex can be about a relationship and it can be a game too. You know, some people go out there and try to get laid and that's all that they have. They don't care about who the chick is. They don't care about anything. They just want sex right then. They want to get off. But I mean, if it's in a relationship then sex is, is going to be like great and, you know, beautiful because it's meaningful. You know, if you really care about somebody, it's not like, hey, I'm just having sex with this guy. It's you're giving yourself to them. You're giving a part of yourself to them. What did you do last night? I drank a lot. Are you yeah, going to go to Bobby's Jared's. after homecoming? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going. Yeah, you are. I want to. I'm not stupid about having sex. Like, I think if you go off and you get pregnant, you get an STD, you deserved it because there are so many ways to prevent it. I mean, if you, get, if you go out and you get pregnant, it's your fault. I mean, there are, how many birth controls are there out there? I'm on birth control, and I still use a condom because I'm so scared of getting pregnant, and I'm so scared of winding up like one of these 15-year-olds with two kids. He has a nice body. That's disgusting. Like, yeah. he looks like something's cut him. Uh-uh. That is because he worked out really hard. I think he's hot. Mm. Oh, my God. I don't know that much. Well, We'll have to make do. How come everybody is skinny in magazines? Everybody's skinny. Every time you I don't know. I'm going to start a fat woman magazine. What's it going to be called? Let's fat be in women. it together. Fat women fatties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, we're just going to go to the football game, go to the dance. We're going to go to Bobby's afterwards. I'm going to be the DD and stuff. So if they want to drink, whatever. But it's just right down the road. Can I get a picture of y'all? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a camera? Uh huh. I like to be treated like I'm beautiful and gorgeous. I like guys that like try to make me feel like that all the time. Homecoming queen is Miss Sarah Mitchell. I just want to be treated like you would treat you know, your mother. Scratch that. Don't want to be treated like you treat your mother. Such a big crush on him. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you ever have sex with him? No, I did not have sex with him. From 16 to 24, guys have those the narrow things on. All they want to do is have sex with a girl. You know, they're in a relationship to have sex with a girl. They plan to take her out to eat into the movies, and then they're going to have sex with the girl. And they just want to get as much as they can. You don't drink I mean, anymore, right? No, but, uh, what about you, Ab? You drink tonight? I don't know if I'm going to drink tonight. I'm not feeling too well. I just don't feel good. Are you nervous about your date? Kind of. 
I'm kind of nervous about like pressure. Are you drinking tonight? Oh yeah. <laughs> A lot. Who's driving you? Uh, I'm probably gonna sleep in the car. Any guy that comes up to you and talks to you and is looking nowhere near your face, yeah, they don't want to get to know you. They want to see you naked. It makes me feel pissed. Not a toy. Sex is huge in teenage lives. I was talking to some girls, and they there was one guy and six females, and they were drinking and carrying on, and they all he talked to them and asked them would they give him a blowjob, and they all gave him one. And I just find that so out of my league because that wasn't our generation it just wasn't like that but I think that it, that the sexual generation today is that giving a blowjob is not a big deal it's not like having sex um, I think okay. intercourse is intercourse oral <laughs> straight up whatever oral sex is sex no because oral sex is not the definition of sex sex is actual intercourse and well, until you do that you're just because you, you're having oral sex that means you're not a virgin it's all to whether you feel it's sex or not if you feel like it's sex and it's sex if you don't feel like it's sex it's not sex it's all it's there's to me there's like there's no set definition of it there's no there's no way this person over here can say that having oral sex is sex and then there's someone else over here saying that not having oral sex or that oral sex is not sex <laughs> I wasn't really aware that she was having sex. She was dating a guy that I would really didn't care for at the time. I felt like he was a bad influence, but I felt like the more I said about it, the more it was going to push her into that relationship. Are you glad you came by yourself, or would you rather have a date? No, I am glad I came by myself, because then you can dance with everybody. And That's what I like about it. But then, like, you don't want to be, like, stupid looking because you're not on a date and stuff. So. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't care. It <laughs> doesn't bother me. Yeah. I'm going to dance with whoever. But yeah. it sucks when all the girlfriends get mad when yeah. you dance when with you their boyfriends. Yeah. Well, they can get over it. So who all is going to be at lobby? I don't know. There's supposed to be a lot of people over there. I'm not sure. But... I think it's gonna be wild. Uh, I think well, I'll meet you out at the car. Okay. And then well, give me a Yes. It's really cute. I don't know. Alright, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Y'all have a careful. Love be careful. Bye. Everybody wear a seatbelt. Bye. Um, I learned a lot about sex by doing it. Alcohol and drugs completely changed my morals. Um, pot smoking it every day, I started stealing, I started lying, I started having sex. Alcohol completely loosens you up. I mean, hey, it's amazing what three beers or three liquor drinks will do to you and your morals and your beliefs, and it's outrageous. I know so many girls that have lost their virginity when they were messed up. First time I had sex, I was in the 10th grade, and me and my cousin and some friends and a friend went over to a guy's house whose parents were out of town. So we started drinking. It wasn't like a big party. It was really calm, really casual, just sitting on the couch having a few beers. I was not drunk. I, would, I had definitely loosened up, and each, there was pairs, there was like boyfriend, girlfriend pairs, and um, we just went off, and it just happened. I, don't, I, I didn't expect it to happen at all because we had talked about it and talked about how I didn't, you know, I wasn't ready, I was still a virgin and all that, and after it happened, I just laid there and I cried. You know, you feel ashamed. You feel like, oh, you know, at least I waited till I was, I was 14 or 15 years old, and that's a waste. I can't go back. I can't take that back. I've just given this to a guy I've known a month. She had started on a rebellious downswing, you know, skipping school, 
and uh, I wasn't aware that she was skipping school as much as she was until she took a guy and a, another girl, they went to a house and bought marijuana. And the house was being watched where they were going to buy the marijuana. And the cops pulled them over and she was arrested that night. And I happened to be at the movies that night and so my ex-husband had to go pick them up. And so when I got home from the movie, I was livid. I was very angry. I was disappointed in her totally. I guess it hurt my feelings because I felt like I had given her all the things that she needed and boy was I off days on that one. But I couldn't talk to her for about three weeks. She would come home and I just would say, you know, I, I am so angry at you that I just can't, I don't even want to see you. And she wrote me this letter. So I will read it to you. Dear Mom, I don't know about you, but I know that I haven't been very happy with the way things have been going between us lately. Even as I write this letter, I feel a deep and hollow sadness. You know, Mom, it's almost as if I've lost something or as if something very precious to me has died. You know, and I know that I'm not perfect. I have certainly made my share of mistakes and I have used poor judgment in the past. What hurts me now so much is what seems to be happening to us. Don't you remember the things me and you used to do together, like shopping or eating out or going on trips together? Don't you remember dancing and singing in the car like we were best friends, that we were inseparable? I miss those things. I know I've screwed up and I will possibly screw up again. Ha, huh. and I'm sorry. I know sorry doesn't cut it anymore, but I'm truly sorry for the things I've done wrong that have hurt you, me, or the family. I'm gonna cry. I was going down a really bad path. I was doing, having sex um, on many occasions, and I think that was because of alcohol and drugs. Before that, my morals were stay a virgin. And um, I got arrested, and that was a big, that was a big deal. I want you to know that I do love you so much, and I have definitely been in the wrong many times, but whether or not you know it or not, you have too. You've hurt me now more than any other time in my life. I want my mother back, and that's not going to happen unless we both talk and both figure out things about ourselves. I hope you aren't offended by this letter because it's not written with hate. It's written with love. I love you, Allison. You had something to say to me? Something on your mind? Yeah, there's definitely some things that I wanted to be open and honest about, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure how you're gonna react. It's, it's really hard to tell you some things just because, I mean, you're my dad, and there's just certain things you should, I feel like I don't wanna talk about with you, but that I yeah. need to because I've changed and I did, there's just things that are in my past that, that I'm not, that I'm really ashamed of, I'm not proud of, yeah. but I feel like if we don't talk about it and I don't open up, then we can't go forward with my new life and with my new decisions and choices that I'm making. But well, I'm just not sure how you're gonna react, so. Well. I don't know, it's just frustrating. I mean, I wanna talk about this, it's just. Well. I just, I feel like you can, you can say whatever, you know that whatever you would want to tell me, if there's something on your heart, something on your mind, you know, I, whatever you say, I'm going to, I'm going to love you. Okay. I would never reject you. You know, I just, I can see you're struggling and see, I, I'm feeling a little antsy about it, but I, I well, Most of all, you, uh, you can you can talk to me about anything. What? Allie Bug, look, honey, you can talk. Okay. Come on, tell me. I just want to tell you that in my past, I have been sexually active, and I have used drugs and alcohol and smoked and all that, and I'm ashamed of it. I'm sorry that I did it, and I hate to tell you, and I don't want to disappoint you, but I want to be open, and I want to be honest, but, and, and I feel so much better. I got it off my chest. 
that's what it is. I have been sexually active and I have made so many wrong choices and mistakes in my past and I just want you to know and I'm sorry. You know, I've, I've wondered about that. You know, for so, for some time, several months, a couple years, you know, you've been withdrawn from me. I, I wondered what was going on in your, in your life. As a, as a child, you were always very close to me. You were always, you know, it's always. Well, I mean, I'm sure that that had a lot to do with it. And, but there was just a lot of things like with y'all's divorce and with just a lot of things that happened when I was a child dealing with you. I didn't feel like I had approval from you. I didn't feel like y'all loved me completely. And me having sex with people or a guy made me feel like I was being loved. And and, and that's really? why, yeah, and it did. So you, you felt like there were times that I didn't approve or yes. I didn't, you didn't measure up or yes. something? Yes. I mean, I, a lot of times I felt like I was put up against Ryan in a lot of things just because, I mean, even growing up, and just because his, his uh, grades and he was always a good child and stuff like that, but. Yeah. I mean, uh, it sort of blows me away. I, but uh, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you felt like you could tell me. I love you. Okay. Love you so much. I feel really fortunate, and I guess even lucky to to not be pregnant, to not have any diseases or AIDS or or dead, because I made terrible choices. I think I did drugs and alcohol and had sex um, for acceptance, for acceptance from friends, for love from guys, because I didn't feel approval from my family, and I just wanted to be loved, and peer pressure's a bitch. <laughs> it has affected me emotionally, because I know I can never take back my virginity, but I have started over. My new life, I'm clean, I'm happy, I have, I'm happy with little things in life, you know, with the nature, with my family, I love hanging out with my family, with my new friends who love me no matter what, no matter if I do drugs or if I don't, and I'm just happy to be alive. Like, be nice to her. And, like, pay for whatever. Like, she wants something to eat. Pay for that. 